Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Sweet. So I don't feel like restarting. So that would suck. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, for those of you who um, were around for my original announcement in the web user group, apologize in advance for the delay. I had some emergencies go on, so I had to delay the, uh, the original start date. But now here we are. Yay. Um, happy everyone's here. A few things to get out of the way. There might be certain topics or information we can't discuss, like specific um, abuse reports or abuse appeals, that kind of thing. So we can give you some general information, um, but we can't go into detail and outcomes of certain investigations for some privacy reasons. Just give it a couple more minutes in case we get some stragglers coming on in. So how's everybody doing? Go forth and hydrate, Methodox. Awesome. Yeah, no, we won't be airing out anybody's dirty laundry. <laughs> um, though we are pretty aware of some things. <laughs> yeah, no drama, hopefully. <laughs> we like to keep the uh, drama to a minimum <laughs> for how much we uh, uh, deal with. So if anybody didn't... Um, Coming a little bit later, this will be on voice, but if you feel more comfortable typing your questions or comments, feel free. Uh, that's all fine. Um, so much popcorn. Woohoo! Tea! I drank all my tea. Kind of sad. Alright, so I guess we can uh, get started. So with these, we're kind of hoping to, you know, do a general Q&A and uh, hopefully get some more feedback from you guys and maybe have a little bit more insight of what we do so there's a better understanding of, of what it is we do. Um, and hopefully we can uh, improve uh, the process a bit. And, if, you know, hopefully uh, for those who may not know how to report certain things uh, uh, in the, the proper way. Maybe we can turn that around and get better abuse reports so then in turn we can actually, you know, do some things. Um, so our team, uh, pretty small team, it's about five-ish of us, and we handle all of the abuse reports uh, that come in in Second Life, which is a lot. Um, we do a few other things. Um, we handle uh, all the marketplace flags and uh, things that come on that with some other uh, case stuff that's not usually abuse related. But a big chunk of what we do is just abuse reports and investigating those and all the fun things. Um, <laughs> 400 reports an hour. Ugh, yeah. It can get a little crazy. I can't really give you exact numbers, but... I would say on a weekly basis we can get through over a thousand ish. So it's a lot <laughs> for uh, a team our size. Um, so yeah, it's a. How many errors? Are... I'm not really sure how much you get filed a day. It depends on uh, what's going on, but it's it's a lot. <laughs> Opinions are actionable. It depends. Um, reading all this stuff. Uh, it really depends on uh, what are actionable. Um, usually depends on, A, what's being reported and 
and how it's reported. Um, sometimes report, people report things that are actionable, but the information that they give is just not enough for us to go on. Either they report the wrong person or it's something that happened ages ago and it's not uh, anything recent that we can look into. Um, sometimes it's just people saying that they got peed on and we're like, oh, okay. <laughs> so it really depends on what we do. We try and um, sort them through. We go through them um, usually the oldest first, just to get those out of the way, and we try and sort them through priority-based things. So the more um, pressing ones, usually like the griefing, um, certain harassment stuff, and, of course, everyone's favorite, age play. Those are ones that usually we see first. Um, so we try and get through those. Uh, yep, yeah, sometimes we get incorrect or incomplete reports, and we really can't do anything without you know enough information. Sometimes it's not enough to where we know where to look, per se, so... We, it's helpful to have all the information there, so be like, all right, this is what's being reported. I can go and check the you know, appropriate, you know, information to see if we can verify it and do our thing. Uh, phishing and fraud—that's uh, not our department. When we do come across them, uh, we uh, will um, escalate that to the fraud team uh, so they can get that all sorted out. But usually. Uh, those should be, uh, if, say someone's reporting a, a compromised account, they should not be reporting that through an AR. That should be going to fraud, so it can be um, dealt with uh, appropriately. Scrolling up a bit, see if I don't miss anything. And... Uh, Beck, I think that's how you say it. Beck Janus, Janus. Uh, how long does it take for a typical typical error to deal with? It really depends on what's being reported. Some things are really easy to be like, yep, this is what this person's doing, and deal it. Some things are a little bit more complicated and takes a lot of investigation to, to you know, to figure out what's going on, how someone's doing something, um, especially with some of the more uh, complicated like harassment. Uh, reports we get sometimes those they just explode and we're just like shuffling through all sorts of information um and dealing with stuff like that uh you can report phishing like if someone's sending phishing links that's fine but if you like uh say if you're reporting that your account's been compromised uh you should definitely um submit a case Yeah, we used to have a lot of abuse categories, but they've been slimmed down a bit just so we can kind of more fine-tune uh, what we're looking at. So there's a few things that can uh, fit into a few um, different categories. One thing to note, though, we have one that's uh, labeled gaming policy violation. That is for skill gaming violations. We see a lot of people just use it for everything because they think it's like, oh, it's a general violation of the game. It's not at all what that's supposed to be for. Uh, so that clogs some things up a bit. So we get a little bit of everything in there. But those should be only used for um, the skill gaming. Yeah, I know. It's not a game, but <laughs> people don't understand the, that category sometimes. I'm like, no, that's not what that means. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, it'd be nice to have the two factor, but that's not my uh, department. We don't handle that at all. So, uh, not sure who would be best to talk about that particular topic. But anything surrounding compromise accounts and that stuff, we uh, sadly don't uh, handle that. 
So there's only very limited information I can provide on that one. I should make my chat window a little bigger so I can read this. Uh, what about bad abuse, alt, alt abuse? I'm assuming you're meaning people who we've... It's very clear that they are not welcome here, and they keep coming back on new accounts. Yeah, you can definitely report those. Uh, let me see what we have in our... We have so many abuse categories. Uh, let's see which one would be good for that. Yeah, we get quite a few of those, but um, what's particularly helpful with those is if you do see someone that is potentially an alt to somebody who it's, it's very clear that they're not supposed to be here, uh, include what you know, who the potential main account is, so we can uh, look at that. Some people are a little uh, sneaky with coming back. Um, you could use harassment. You could also, like, say sometimes people come back and they keep doing the thing that they've done before, whether it be griefing or harassment. So you can uh, report them under whatever the most appropriate category is for what they're doing, if they're actually coming back to do something. Um, so, yeah, you could probably use... Uh, if they're not doing that, you could probably use um, harassment, targeted behavior, or uh, yeah, that one would probably be the best one, depending on what they're doing. If they're clearly doing something else, then feel free to put it under the most appropriate category. Wikipedia says SL is a game. Shame. Right, scroll up, see if I missed anything else. Yeah, if you're seeing something that's going on in a different region and you're not reporting it from that region, be sure to include that in the details. As whenever you file a report, we get a, uh, a SORL to where you sit in the report from, which can be awkward sometimes. People don't realize that, and we end up teleporting in their bedroom. We're like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> um, so, yeah, just be pretty clear. Let's see. Oh, more balls of text. I don't think I've heard of that one, Al. I'll have to check that one out. That seems interesting. I need to do some additional digging on that. Yeah, we always check the screenshots when they come in. Um, 
sadly, a lot of times they're not so useful, either because people just don't realize that it's sending a screenshot. So we often get, like, if they do try it, there's, like, just stuff cluttered all over the place. We can't clearly see what's going on. Um, in certain cases where they're like, this person's doing the thing, and it's pretty clear that they're doing the thing. Um, but they don't have the names. Like, the names are blocked off. That's always fun. Or uh, if they have the sun settings, if it's really, really dark, we can't see. Um, so it's it's if you do send a screenshot, be sure that uh, it's clear of what it is that's going on. If it's an object, uh, go to the object profile, and so we can see what the name of it is, who owns it, and all that fun stuff. Um, if you're reporting a user for doing something, make sure we can see the their actual account name. Um, so, and we don't. Uh, sometimes we get people who use third-party links for screenshots, like Yazo, or Yazo, um, Imgur, stuff like that. We don't use those as um, uh, evidence due to the fact that they could be altered. So. Uh, Uh, reading your other bullet text. How? Let's see. Oh, yeah, that's another point, uh, Tessa. We get a lot of ARs where people copy and paste the chat log into the description. We don't use that as proof on its own just because someone could easily change that around. Um, we Obviously, with screenshots and uh, stuff that's in the description, we do have other logs that we look into that can help us verify whether or not s someone did something. Um, but it's always helpful whenever there's actually a screenshot that shows everything. We're like, yay. Um, but, yeah. Chat logs in uh, AR descriptions are not very helpful. We prefer you to use that uh, area for describing what's going on, who did it, where, you know, um, be as clear as possible. So alternatively, words. Alternatively, if you are reporting something that is going in the chat, one of the best ways to actually uh, provide the information that is to screenshot the chat log um, of what's going on in your report, um, and then we can look at it and go from there. I'll have to look into that cheer a little bit more. I can't remember. All, we have so much stuff that comes across us. Um, that's hard to remember them all, but I'll definitely look in that more and see what's going on. Interesting. All right, well, for the sake of keeping uh, this going, is there any uh, particular other burning questions anybody has or any kind of 
um, feedback or anything that uh, we can hopefully try and um, guide you guys into uh, the correct way of uh, reporting something or how, how to handle certain things. Um, five minutes of service can see action taken. We we can't really divulge the outcome of our investigations. It's more of a, it's a kind of a privacy thing. Uh, so when we do action uh, a residence account, that's really an issue that's between us and them. Um, we don't share that uh, with other residents. Uh, so usually when sometimes it's pretty obvious what we do. We don't say what, what we do, but you usually can tell, um, depending on what they're doing. Just guess two. Uh, instant water must have been before my time, because I don't recall it. Um, was it perfect to resend an AR? Uh, I see. Uh, if something's continuously happening, Go for, you're more than welcome to continue the AR. Um, so either if nothing happened, it was either there was not enough evidence or maybe we did something, but it's not as transparent that we actually did something. Um, but it's, we definitely encourage if there's something going on, keep you know reporting as, as the incidents happen. That way we have a track record of it. Um, we have a record of all the ARs um, and all that fun stuff. So if anything, it gives us a history. You should be getting a, whenever you um, submit an, a an AR, you should get an email saying that it was received by us. If you're not, uh, hopefully that's not broken. As far as I know, it should work. I'm not exactly sure how much we get in a day. We do get a lot. Um, and it also depends on what's going on. So sometimes it, there's not a lot going on, or maybe there's something exploding. We get a bajillion ARs about that particular issue that's going on. Um, though we usually end up handling, uh, in, a, in a week, uh, we usually end up handling over a thousand-ish, depending. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on what's going on. I don't have the exact numbers. Um, let's see, what else we got? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Let's see, scroll up a bit more. I can send a message when it's right in the yard to make things easier. Oh man, be a few things. <laughs> um, 
definitely be as clear as possible. Like, if you're to show that report to somebody who has no idea what the issue is and they can't put, you know, understand what's being reported, then you might need to have some more information. Because you gotta understand, we're, we're not always deeply involved in uh, certain things that are going on. So, say with certain like harassment or uh, issues or th- or like even griefing that you know has happened because there's some sort of like personal drama or a beef that people have with each other. We we don't we're not as um, involved in that like the people who are being affected by it. So we don't usually know what's going on until we get into it. So. Um, it's always best to have as much information as possible. Don't assume that we know everything that's going on. Um, so, you know, just be as clear as possible who's doing it, what they're doing, um, any steps you might have taken to reconcile the issue. Like, hey, you, your tree is on my yard. Can you move it? Or um, I asked this person to stop doing this, and I blocked them, and then they keep on doing this, you know. Um, definitely make it very clear. So we, So it's... The quicker that we can understand what's going on, the quicker we can actually dive in and start investigating and do what we need to do. Uh, the false retaliation ARs. We review um, ARs very carefully. Uh, we do. A, we will notice sometimes ARs are uh, filed as just a part of revenge, but we can easily kind of tell that it's bogus most of the time. We're like, yeah, no. Or it's just, I don't know what this is, and we close it with no evidence. Um, so we do see people that will be like, I'm going to have me and my friends file all these ARs on this person. We're not going to action just based on the number of ARs. We actually look and see if there is a violation going on. Um, and if we do see that people are trying to abuse it, sometimes we might step in and be like, yo, don't do that. <laughs> um, but yeah. We do see that, and people will get a little scared because they're like, oh, this person and all these people are, you know, you know, having their friends come at me with this, uh, and they think that they might get in trouble, but as long as they're not doing anything to get in trouble, there's you know, nothing to really worry about. Vigilante. We know of uh, a few. There's definitely a few uh, little pockets of problem children that we're aware of. Um, and we keep an eye uh, out for any issues. Uh, but yeah, we... Uh, so yeah, if you get someone who's like, yeah, I'm going to fly all these errors on this person, it's usually just, ah, uh, thanks. And, you know, we're pretty uh, good at telling if uh, if they're legit or not. Uh, death threats, we, uh, Sweet Valentine, we actually take that very seriously. If you have someone who is threatening to harm you in real life, we not only advise that you um, report that immediately, but if you do feel like that you are your your life is being threatened, contact your local authorities. Uh, they'll be able to assist you more with that. We can only assist on what's happening on our service. Um, but if you feel that, that your life is in danger or there's something going on outside of Second Life, you need to contact the authorities or the appropriate support or abuse um, teams for those platforms. Um, but if someone's sending you threats in Second Life, we definitely want to know. That also brings me to another uh, a point when you say it's... It's not you, but a few people are having the issues. We often will get ARs where someone's like, hey, this person's bothering a friend of mine, but the friend doesn't file an AR. We always encourage that the affected party files the AR, so we're not going through like hearsay and third party and all that um, fun stuff. Uh, I didn't know how to file. If they ever have questions on how to actually... Um, file. They can always contact us and we'll, uh, we can assist them on uh, how to actually properly report that and get uh, the assistance they need.
Yeah, we do get a, a few of the uh, playing the telephone on it with uh, abuse reports. It'll get to us, and by the time we actually narrow down the source and figure out what actually happened, it's usually way different. Yeah, we do have a community. Let me bring these up. We have they're on the uh, user group page, but we have a couple things. And I find it in my sea of tabs. Uh, that's what I want. Got a few knowledge base pages. Um, this is for general abuse and harassment. So there's a few tips there that you can use. Um, we also have this for. Um, Journal filing of these reports, uh, but we can definitely go into some more depth uh, if necessary. Um, I know sometimes whenever people contact my team through cases and they're reporting like some serious harassment or they feel like their their uh, life is in danger, we have some wording that we'll send to help you know guide what they can do in world to navigate that whole sticky mess and you know encourage these people to reach out to their authorities when things happen. Because obviously we, we can't enforce, we're not law enforcement, sadly. So there's only so much we can do, um, but we do want to help when we can. Uh, see, IPs are a little... Um, funky they're pretty easy for people to get but if someone is say like you know divulging your uh, information we can uh, pop and be like no don't do that um, but yeah, IP addresses are just with the nature of how the internet works and, uh, and all that it's not hard to get IPs Name seems familiar. And I've seen so many things just <laughs> jumble mess in my brain of all the things I've seen over the years. Um, Uh, we do not actually uh, use any video or audio as uh, action, just for the sole purpose that it could be altered or edited. Um, so we do not use that um, as proof. We usually go based off of what we can find in our own system and logs and all the various things we collect to uh, prove whether or not someone's doing something. Which is something we see, we'll see on abuse reports where someone's like, I want to attach this video, but I can't. And you're like, sorry, can't. <laughs>
Right. Does anybody else have any other additional questions or feedback or general shenanigans? It really, with the, if we do ban someone, it really depends on uh, what they're doing and uh, how long it takes us to investigate. Not all reports that are confirmed as someone violating does not always end in a ban. Um, we try and give people the opportunity to learn from their mistakes. Some people, they just need a little education. Uh, so usually we'll try and start with some warnings and we have a prog uh, progressive like suspension uh, uh, words are escaping me but usually people work their way up to multiple suspensions before we are like no get out of here there's certain things that will just get you outright just the boot and get out um, but usually we uh, will try and give people uh, sufficient chances to not be a jerk <laughs> It depends on what they're uh, doing, Lucy. Um, usually, we uh, it'll go up to. Um, I'm trying to think of what I have numbers in my brain. Uh, depending on what they're doing, sometimes we'll start with like you know a warning and a couple suspensions. But if it's clear that they just are not going to stop, we might not work up the full tree and just tell them to get out. Uh, but usually, it goes from. Uh, Warning up to a two-week suspension, and then after that, you're done. They can be uh, cumulative. It de really depends. Um, we try and kind of judgment call it. Say if someone did something way back in, like, 2008, and they haven't done anything since, and maybe they got suspended for a day doing what they did, and they do something today, we might not work them back, you know, keep going up. We might just be like, hey, don't do that. Um, oh, what have you done, Mesodox? <laughs> Are you on my radar now? It's a bad place to be. But yeah, we try and keep an account of like um, how recent their most recent um, disciplinary action was, and we base it off of there. So it really depends on what they've done too. Uh, if you go delinquent, not quite a governance issue, though we do um, sometimes review those. Usually what we do, um, if say, once someone is like 90 days uh, delinquent, we'll go in and we'll kind of review and see if there's anything we can waive and all that fun stuff. Um, but generally uh, other teams will handle that too. So it just really depends on what you've gone delinquent on and... Um, some other ad additional things. But we do give ample enough time for someone to uh, settle the balance due until it becomes disabled. And if it does, then usually you just contact and um, and whatever team uh, is appropriate for your account will get to it and help you out. Yeah, we don't really take too kindly to uh, people crashing regions. <laughs> Usually don't get too many warnings about that one. I think I know who you're talking about, Hal. I can't really go into too depth, obviously. Um, uh, but there are, there are some limitations to how we can prevent people from coming back. People, we have some ways to uh, block various things, but 
people are crafty. People can easily get away or get around uh, certain things, um, which is unfortunate because <laughs> it, it it can get a little irritating depending on who they are and what they're doing. Yeah, that's another good thing. Some people aren't creative with their new names when they come back, so it's an easy to, to snap. Yeah, we try and be careful if if we are going to the point where we might block um, some aspects. We try and be careful because there are people who connect with on through internet cafes. They might share a computer. It might affect multiple people. So we definitely don't want to block other people who are legit um, from accessing Second Life. Uh, so we're we're pretty careful about that, but. Again, if we do it, there's people can get around it, and it's unfortunate, but it happens. Yeah, unfortunately, with how crafty people are sometimes, it, it can be difficult to keep people out. Sometimes they just get sick of coming back over and over again after we smack them with our hammer. <laughs> um, so some people keep us very busy. Let's see what else I might have missed. True, some people enjoy the hammer a little too much. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh... No, yeah, that's true, Rex. Um, sometimes people will go that route. Or, you know, borrow a friend's computer, go to the library, all that fun stuff. Um, yeah. So it looks like we've got about 15 more minutes left. Is there any other particular topics that we've been covered that you guys might want a little bit more information on? Uh, and all that fun. If someone wanted to know how many times someone's found the AR on them, we don't give out that information uh, to others. It's uh, we can we keep that as private as possible. So if someone comes and goes, I want to know how many reports that this specific person has filed on me, we we would be no, sorry, we can't give you that information. Do we get in forum problems? That's another thing I forgot. We also do moderate the forums, so um, if anybody's acting a fool in the forums, we are the ones that go in and clean that up and respond to those uh, reports that are filed on there. That's been a more recent addition to our uh, a toolbox of things we work out of. Um, within the last year, I can't remember when we got it. It's been a little bit.
uh, empty box stuff, definitely flag them uh, if you, if there's an item that or a listing that is you know of course violating the marketplace rules. Um, you could file an AR. Additionally, uh, we try and get through those as quick as we can. Obviously, we have we end up with pages and pages and pages of um, flags, which can be a little tedious to get through. Um, but flagging usually won't get you in trouble unless you are trying to abuse the system in some way. I don't know if we can do notifications uh, when an error has been processed. That would probably have to involve some tinkering with the tools. I'm not sure how that would actually go through. Um, oh. We cannot confirm or deny if someone is banned or not. We try. We don't uh, usually give out that information. Occasionally, a lot of people who want to, who really want to know what the outcome of their particular report is, and we sadly can't give that information uh, for privacy reason reasons. Ah, my phone is giving me notifications that it's almost lunchtime. Thanks, phone. Yeah, if you had a tenant say that they are hacked, they, they definitely want to um, contact fraud. But sometimes we do get people who don't really want to admit to others that they've been naughty. So they will make up things. <laughs> uh, which is always fun, which is also, uh, we sometimes see that misinformation where something may happen to somebody and then they go around saying, oh, no, it was nothing, and then people believe that we didn't do anything. But that's why we're like, yeah, take it with a grain of salt. These reports were delivered to a region owners in Linen Lab. I don't recall that at all. Either... It was something, some sort of rumor mill that happened before my time, or I don't know. I haven't heard that one. Yeah, I don't know about that one, but, uh, it's interesting. Oh, yeah, if it was 2008, I, yeah. <laughs> I've been here for a while, but not that long. But, yeah, they definitely don't, they, all reports go to us. Uh, they should not be going to anybody else at all.
Interesting. Yeah, it's definitely not the case now. So that's good. Um, but uh, on the topic of, you know, private estates, we do encourage people who do own those to use the tools available to them to help manage anything that's going on on their region. And, of course, always follow this report if we need to get involved and do some smackage. But we do encourage people to use the tools available to them before they have to resort to getting us involved. So if if block, blocking works and you don't hear from them again, great. That's awesome. Uh, if you ban them from your region and they don't try and come back, that's also awesome. But obviously if you block or ban somebody from your region or from contacting you and they keep trying to get around it, yeah, we definitely want to know. Uh, sometimes we do uh, blacklist stuff if we can determine if it's definitely not something we need to have around. Um, there's some other stuff we do as well. Um, but if it's something particularly bad that we do not want all around. We have to be careful with the blacklist demon as it can break some things. So we're pretty careful with it. But there are times where we um, do a blacklist if, if the case calls for it. Yeah, if you see if you're seeing any uh, particular nasty items about, you can definitely um, file an AR if it's being used. If you know of any particular, you can feel free to drop me a, a message, and I can see if I can uh, dig more into it. So I, I like breaking things that people want to use to grieve. It's, it's enjoyable. <laughs> so I rub my hands together menacingly. Yeah, that's also fun, too. Like, how does this work? Hmm. Yeah, the problem with band boxes is that uh, we don't always know where they are. People are pretty, they can be pretty good at hiding them, and we don't always uh, know where they drop the things. But if you see one, feel free to report it, and we can take a look. Um, we should get a few here and there um, when we're, uh, you know, investigating. We're like, oh, yep, no, get out of here. Uh, sometimes you, actually, this region that you're on right here, um, this is kind of our little area that we, you might see us from time to time uh, while we're in world. Sometimes we just chill out here before we go fly off to return some lovely things. Um, so you can, but we try and to, um, usually if you contact us, we don't want it to be a way where you, it's meant to circumvent the uh, abuse reporting system. Um, but we can definitely guide you um, if you contact us. If you see me on, you're more than welcome to ping me and I can um, guide you. And since I am, I don't know if I, but I am the supervisor of the this current team. So I can definitely help direct you guys into some general stuff. And uh, questions and whatnot. If you can't, if you don't happen to uh, get um, a hold of one of us, not so much frowned upon. We just don't want um, residents to get the idea that they can just ping one of us if they see us to get immediate response instead of just not filing an abuse report. So we'll always um, recommend that you do that. Um, but obviously we don't want to ignore anything that's going on if it's crazy. Um, and we might not even be, so if you do see us in a world, we might not actually be paying attention in that tab. We often have several windows and tabs going on for stuff, so we might not be um, 
paying attention directly, but. You might see, we, uh, we also try and do um, what we call our little in-world rounds where we go and visit different regions and say hi and see how people are doing and kind of answer any questions if we, uh, if anybody has them. So you might see us lurk lurking around. That's, uh, if you ever see any um, governance avatars with numbers on them, that's people from my team. Yep, usually if you see uh, one of those governance avatars, it's always the same person on them. Uh, but we don't tell you who we are. <laughs> uh, it's for uh, privacy and protection purposes and whatnot. I don't think all of us are scary. It's, it kind of depends on what your uh, definition of scary is. Yeah, usually if you see us in a world where usually in world for a particular purpose, either we're investigating an AR or something. Um, sometimes we, like I said, we stay parked here sometimes just if we're already in world and we're looking through abuse reports and so just relaunching the viewer every time we just sit here until the next thing comes up and we go fly off into the distance when the governance back signal signals. <laughs> Nope, none of us are outsourced. And yeah, that's correct. So we we don't want to bypass the systems that we already have in place, but um, if we can take a moment to, you know, hopefully guide someone in how to file uh, an AR or how to handle something, we're more than happy to try and help guide the person through that, um, if possible. So if we don't answer you, it's not because we hate you. We're just probably busy or not um, tapped in, so don't take offense if we don't answer you. <laughs> Or we're just swamped with all the other messages we get. Lots of things. Yeah, if, uh, if another Linden files an uh, abuse report, they are um, filtered to be um, something that we see, one of the first things we see. Um, of course, we can filter um, the abuse reports to... I just hit my mic, sorry about that. Uh, to display a certain way, depending on how we want to work it or what we're looking for. So, but yeah, they, they usually go up um, to the higher priority ones so we can see them quicker instead of just getting buried in. Right, I think that uh, about wraps it up. I hope you guys, I hope that was uh, educational. I hope we... Um, we're able to answer some questions. Um, again, if you ever see me around, you have a question, feel free to, to ping me. Um, I'm more than happy to address some stuff um, if I'm if at all possible. Uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure. I will see you guys next time once I update the thing and put the next date. Um, but yeah. Sorry, meeting calendar. We have. Uh, for the reason. Um, there we go. We have this link. Uh, once the next one, uh, next meeting date, uh, I finalize. I'll plop it in there. But should be about you know 
every two weeks or so. But I'll update that in a bit and uh, get the next one. Uh, but it should be the same time. Um, hope it'll have a permanent office. <laughs> yeah, that'll be interesting. Um, but yeah. But if there's any changes or different dates and whatnot, it'll be all updated there. So keep an eye on that. I mean, if you want to chill on the tree stumps, by all means, go for it. <laughs> this will be up until all time. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you like the office space. Took a long time to uh, make sure everything was rotated in the right direction. I am not good at decorating. But yeah, thank you guys for your time. I gotta run. It's that time for lunch. I hunger. So, uh, catch you guys next time. Hope you guys have an awesome day.